Good afternoon. My name is Marietje Schaak and I'm a member of the European Parliament with the Dutch Democratic Party D66. We're part of the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe here in the European Parliament. And I'm very sorry I cannot join you in person today, but of course I'm glad to share some of my thoughts through this recording. In the European Parliament I serve on the committees for foreign affairs, international trade and human rights. And since 2011 I've been actively working on and pushing for the reform of the EU's export control regime of dual-use items. We have waited a very long time for the Commission's proposal and I'm glad that it is finally on the table. But now, of course, the real work starts. While the current proposal contains good ideas and is definitely a step in the right direction, it needs more work. The EU's policy needs to make sure that certain dual-use goods including ready-made surveillance systems, are not marketed, designed and sold to authoritarian regimes anywhere in the world. Those regimes use them to spy on journalists, human rights defenders or opposition figures. But unfortunately still, many highly advanced systems are being sold to authoritarian regimes from the EU every day. This is a billion euro business. The revelations from the Italian company hacking team underline exactly what I'm talking about. While the systems are getting more advanced and smaller, faster and cheaper, EU regulation does not provide sufficient transparency and accountability yet. Now just to be clear, the issue of export controls of dual use items is not just a human rights issue but also fundamental to the security of the EU's own interests and digital infrastructure. After all, the same systems can be used for corporate espionage. Stopping the unchecked proliferation of advanced and dangerous products is thus also a strategic goal for us. The question is how to make sure that the goal of stopping such exports is achieved in a targeted way, without unnecessary burdens and in a way that provides legal clarity and certainty for businesses as well as export control authorities. The Commission has proposed a new catch-all provision which could be used to stop unlisted dual-use items from being transferred to entities or persons with a known history of human rights violations. Now given the speed at which technology advances we need an approach that can keep up with these rapid changes. However, the terminology and criteria must be clear to make sure that we do not get into a situation where masses of companies feel forced to request authorization for every single product export, because this would be unclear and unhelpful. A targeted approach is my goal. At the same time, we must be realistic. Strong and effective export controls do cost time and money. In fact, it already does. Thousands, if not tens of thousands of people in the EU, as well as worldwide, are already working on export controls compliance. So some of the arguments that I hear now from the business community, such as that this regulation would lead to enormous extra costs and unprecedented situations, are actually not very credible. Too often, and I am not happy to say this, but the private sector only says no to any regulatory proposal instead of engaging in a constructive dialogue to create the best possible legislation. I would argue that in today's world of rapid economic advances outside the so-called West, in which citizens expect responsible action from the business sector more and more, strong legislation is actually also in the private sector's interest. Principle-based norms should create a new bottom line and Europe should show leadership. Now, apart from rules for the exporters themselves, we will also aim to strengthen the rules for the export controls authorities. To have an effective policy, we need a level playing field across the EU and we need to ensure more accountability. We cannot have a situation where the same license for a product to the same destination is being denied in one member state but granted in another. And this still happens. So more information exchange between authorities, greater transparency to the public and much clearer guidance on how criteria such as human rights and repression should be interpreted are therefore key. While it would be great 
and ideal to have worldwide rules on export controls of dual-use products, this is simply not realistic. And we in Europe cannot sit around and wait for the rest of the world to change. I believe we must lead by example, especially given our own interests in this chain of responsibilities as well. Lastly, we need to look at the terminology that is being used for products that are controlled. It is absolutely essential that legitimate security research is not hindered by export controls regulation. And we can look at how that is possible and how we can look at the use of capabilities of products to decide whether or not it should be controlled. For example, covering products which are used to exfiltrate data from a device without consent from the user could be a more targeted and effective approach than using broader terms such as quote-unquote hacking tools. The legislative process in the EU is finally moving on this crucial issue and I would encourage you all to contribute to the ongoing discussion in a constructive way. And I do look forward to engaging further with you in person via email or social media and I wish you a very fruitful conference today. Thank you.